he uh, grew up, he was born in Ireland, came over to a very young age, came in through Montreal and then settled in Little Dublin, which is where St. Bridget's Parish is. And uh, it was the place where the Irish, you know, settled in town there. His claim to fame was he was a great student. He was offered a scholarship at the University of Rochester because he was the number one student in his class. Uh, he chose not to take, except that he went into work as a, as a Mason. But uh, the West Point was looking for someone from our area to, to have a point there to actually pass the test. So they called the school superintendent. He said, you know, I had this kid O'Rourke here a couple years ago. He was a whiz. So they went. Colonel O'Rourke took the test and passed, of course. He was a few years older than his peers when he went to West Point because of that. But he excelled at West Point. He graduated first in his class. So um, when the Civil War broke out, being a number one student in his class, he was put in the Army Corps of Engineers where he quickly was sent down south to build fortifications to actually bomb Confederate forts. Uh, when the 140th was formed in Rochester, he was asked to take charge of it, so he did. And in that time when he came home, he married. He got married to Clara Bishop. She was an organist at, at uh, St. Bridget's. And uh, then it was off to war, and they were, at, they were at Fredericksburg, 140th, Fredericksburg and Cancellersville, but they were really sort of in the background. Uh, on July 1st when the battle started, they were 12 miles away. So they were marched in, the part of the 5th Corps, and they were camped in the back. They were reinforcements. And when the battle took a turn for the worse and a great gap opened, they called up the 5th Corps and the 140th to plug the gap. The little round top was the high point of the whole battle. And it was the end of the left flank, which was the, which was the goal of the rebels. All, day, all night they marched, all their troops to the right, to turn the left flank. General Warren was sent by General Meade to take a, to assess the condition and went up on Little Round Top and there was nobody there. The South's already rushing by the right side. So he went down and the first person he saw was Colonel O'Rourke, who he knew as a teacher in the Army Corps of Engineers. And he asked Colonel O'Rourke to come up and, and you know, go to Little Round Top, take, you know, defend Little Round Top. They were, they were really not battle tested. They've been in battles with bullets whizzing over their heads from a distance and a few bombs here and there, but they'd never been in combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat or close quarters. When they came through the woods, they saw the whole Battle of Gettysburg before them, you know, and someone called it the perfect cauldron of death. So that was the first thing they saw, and then of course the Confederates were swarming the hill. So they didn't have time to, you know, to place his troops and load their guns. Colonel O'Rourke pulled out his sword, charged two of his companies just headlong into the Confederates, staggered their progress. In the meantime, there were other companies deployed to the right of the 140th where they could load and actually have a firing line, you know, into them. And then the, once they had a firing position and they just poured the, the lead into the, to the rebels, um, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't withstand the fire, they withdrew. So in a matter of minutes, the South went from winning the Battle of Gettysburg to losing the Battle of Gettysburg because when the smoke cleared, Colonel Rook died leading the charge, the Texans were driven back, the left flank was not turned. And eventually the South withdrew all the way.